By Washington's side as vice president, for both of his terms, was a lawyer, statesman, and diplomat, John Adams. As one of the founding fathers of our nation, Adams was instrumental in convincing the first Continental Congress to declare independence from Great Britain and help Thomas Jefferson draft the Declaration of Independence in 1776. A fierce and vocal opponent of the Stamp Act of 1765, which said that no printed material could be printed in the colonies unless it was on imported British stamped paper, was imposed upon the colonists without consulting American legislators. In December of that year, Adams delivered a speech in Massachusetts that declared the act invalid since the people of Massachusetts had no representation in British Parliament. In 1770, in Boston, an altercation between colonists and British soldiers resulted in the death of five civilians. The incident came to be known as the Boston Massacre. And while the tragedy was yet another sign that America should push towards independence, when Adams was called upon to defend the soldiers in court, he accepted, in spite of what it might do for his reputation. At the trial, Adams made a now famous statement, ensuring the soldiers received a fair trial based on the facts and evidence available. It is more important that innocence be protected than it is that guilt be punished. For guilt and crimes are so frequent in this world that they cannot all be punished. After the revolution, Adams served abroad as a diplomat, negotiating the peace treaty with Great Britain and securing vital loans from bankers in Amsterdam. In the election of 1788 through 89, the electors in the Electoral College were each permitted to cast two votes. All of the 69 electors cast one vote each for Washington. In second place, with 34 votes, came John Adams. Presiding over the Senate during his tenure as vice president, John Adams cast a record 29 tie-breaking votes. But otherwise, Adams found the office frustrating and dull. Washington, while a collaborative leader, rarely consulted Adams on matters of policy or administration. John famously wrote to his wife, Abigail. My country has, in its wisdom, contrived for me the most insignificant office that ever the invention of man contrived or his imagination conceived. When elected president in 1797, Adams continued with all of the major programs and policies set forth by Washington. He even retained the same cabinet members, although Adams often made decisions without consulting them, and indeed, even making decisions in opposition to the cabinet's advice. While John Adams' independent-mindedness often met with criticism, the prickly leader, as he was called, had a talent for making the right decisions among sometimes universal opposition. It is thought that Adams' stance on making peace with the French, rather than continued hostilities as a result of the Quasi War and the conflict between France and Britain is what lost him the election for what would have been his second term in 1801. Though it was thought that Adams bore ill will towards Jefferson for defeating him in his second bid for the presidency, Adams' correspondence with his fellow founding father suggested otherwise. In fact, when Adams died on July 4th, 1826, 50 years after the adoption of the Declaration of Independence, John Adams' last words were, 
Thomas Jefferson survives.